Hey, my name's Katie. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to share with you my extreme tips for how our family saves money. We are a family of four, almost five. I have two older daughters who are 14 and 16, and then I am pregnant now and we'll be having our third baby in just a few weeks. When my older kids were younger, I was a single mom and I really learned how to be super frugal and save money and get by with like the bare minimum. And a lot of those habits have evolved and just kind of stuck around even though I'm not necessarily in that same financial situation that I was then. I still see a lot of the benefits of living that way. So we've kind of maintained that same lifestyle over the years. A few months ago, I did a video about the things that I personally do that are extreme ways to save money. And in this video, I thought that I would expand it and share ways that my entire family saves money in extreme ways. Some of these tips are going to be more extreme than others, but they're all pretty simple ways that your family can save money without inconveniencing you too much. Like I said, I started these things because I had to when I was a single mom, but even now that my life is a little less stressful and I have a little bit more financial freedom, these are all still things that I continue to do and will continue to do for the foreseeable future. So the very first thing that we do is that we live in a small space. We don't have a huge house with lots of bedrooms and a lot of square footage. When you live in a small space, just enough for your family to be comfortable in, then that doesn't only save money as far as like the cost of the house, but you're saving money on electricity and insurance, property taxes, all of these things. Your kids do not each need their own individual room. They can share rooms. And with a smaller house, you really have more family time together to enjoy each other's company. So I've already talked about this in a lot of my videos, but I had a house in Tennessee that I had bought and renovated, and it was a pretty good size house. When I originally bought it, it had an unfinished basement, so I finished it, fixed that house up and it ended up being I think around 26 or 2700 square feet which was way more than we needed um, for our family and so we ended up selling that and with the equity that we got from that house we bought a much smaller house that is about uh, 11 or 1200 square feet for um, when we paid cash for the house because of the we downsized so much so now we don't have a mortgage and that gives us a whole lot of financial freedom. The second thing that you can do to save money is to become a minimalist or as much as a minimalist that is feasible for your family. You don't have to be hardcore, but getting rid of as much unnecessary stuff and clutter and not buying a whole lot of things and just having like the bare essentials plus a few extra is really gonna save you money. When you look around your house and you look at everything that's there, I mean, just look around at everything you have right now, you paid money for probably most of those items. And so that was time that you spent at work and you had to earn that money to buy those things. And do you really need those things? Was it worth it to you? Is something to really consider with like every item that you have and own and in the future when you are going to purchase it. So we're about to have a new baby and there is so much out there marketed towards new parents, all these things that they want you to have, uh, a nursery, like the whole nursery design and just all of the stuff that they tell you that you need. And really, you need so little when you have a newborn. I'm going to be doing a minimalist baby haul, everything that we've decided that like we needed for the baby, plus, you know, some, a few extras. You don't have to be like super minimalist, but just make sure that everything that you buy is going to serve a purpose and be very valuable. That's something that we think about whenever we buy anything. Um, but 
this just having a new baby just like really just like is mind blowing like how much stuff they really market to you. And when your kids are little and they're playing with toys, you don't have to buy a whole lot of toys. Kids are fine having just a few things out at a time and you can kind of rotate their toys around so that they have new exciting toys every so often. So that way they're not bombarded with a whole lot of choices and it's really developmentally more appropriate for kids to only have a few choices of toys out at a time. Kids also just prefer to play with stuff that adults are using around the house, brooms, cooking stuff, go outside, just there's, you don't need a whole lot of stuff, even though that stuff is just like marketed and marketed and marketed to us all the time. So number three is no baths and reduce your showering time. So we don't ever take baths because it wastes so much water and then we limit our shower time. I have two teenage girls and they have a limit on how long they're allowed to take a shower. We put that in place a long time ago because showers are enjoyable and they like to be in there forever. So everybody have like has like a five minute cap on how many, on how long they're able to be in the shower. It's also important to remember that you don't have to shower every day. I mean, especially if you are not outside sweating or getting real dirty. For babies and young children, they really only need a bath once a week or so. And, you know, besides like a wipe down. My teens do like to take a shower every day. I totally respect people's needs to shower more often than I do. I do not shower every day, um, but they like to take a shower every day. So that's where that like five minute limit is put in place. But just to like really reduce your water cost, you can also put a water saving shower head on your shower to help reduce those costs. Uh, my husband has a gym membership that is included in his health insurance and his gym has showers, so he's able to take a shower for free at the gym every day he goes to the gym. So just really be conscious about how much water you're using cleaning yourself or just in general. Number four, we basically only drink water. Um, I One of my side hustles is I work for Instacart, so I go grocery shopping for other people and I am just blown away at how much money some people spend on drinks that are not really beneficial. I mean, they're not beneficial at all. Things like soda and juice, uh, flavored water, sparkling water, stuff like that. Like they buy so many drinks when like water is perfectly fine. Sometimes people will spend half of their grocery bill on drinks. Now, I live in Florida, it's really hot. I understand being thirsty, but water is just perfectly fine to drink. We have a Berkey water filter and we just dump tap water in there and it filters out our water. It is like a little bit of an initial investment, but we like don't have to buy bottled water or anything like that anymore. We have reusable water bottles or we'll use like mason jars at home. Number five is whenever we go out, uh, we always bring our own food. So we very rarely ever eat out at a restaurant or grab food when we're out. We always do have a plan for food and if we're gonna be out during a meal, we try and take food with us. So for example, we live in Florida and we like to visit different theme parks and instead of buying lunch there, which can get very expensive, we always pack our lunch and take lunch and snacks and drinks with us so we don't have to make those purchases when we're out. So keeping along the same lines of food, the number six thing that we do is we don't eat meat, especially right now with inflation, meat prices are just skyrocketing and so we don't eat meat anyway, but that is something that anybody can do. Either don't eat it at all or just reduce your meat consumption to save some money, um, especially right now. I've also done a lot of past videos on how we like meal plan and prep 
that I will link down below, but I've talked a lot on past videos about how we save money in on food and groceries and stuff. But the way that we eat at home and plan our meals and meal prep and stuff really saves us like a significant amount of money on our grocery budget every month. But again, you can go watch those videos. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about that in this video because I feel like I've covered that a lot on this channel. So number seven is grow your own food together. This is something that we used to do a whole lot in when we were in Tennessee. We moved to Florida a couple of years ago and I just haven't gotten back into gardening or anything. But I think it's really important and valuable to grow food with your young kids. It really teaches them a whole lot. And my kids are teens now, so they're not as interested in doing that now that they're like a little bit older. But when they were younger, we had a ton of fun going outside and growing food together. Also moving from Tennessee to Florida, the seasons are completely different. And I just haven't had a chance to figure that out yet. But it is on my to-do list is to grow your own food because not only will you save money, but you'll know that that food is super nutritious. So the number eight extreme thing that we do has to do with our thermostat. Um, I know a lot of people like to keep it really cold inside during the summer and really warm inside during the winter, but we try and adjust our bodies to a more natural uh, temperature that the season is in. So right now it's summer in Florida. It's like some days it can be close to 100 degrees outside. Our thermostat in our house is only set at 80, which I know a lot of people think that that's like they can never live in 80 degree weather, but to us, we're used to it now and it's really not hot. We do have fans that we turn on at night when we're sleeping and, um, but we're just used to it. It doesn't feel hot to us at all. If we ever feel like we're warm, you can go stand outside for like three minutes and come back inside and it's super cool in the house. Um, so, and then in the winter, we don't turn our heat on at all. We have a couple little space heaters if it gets real cold while we're, you know, just sitting on the couch or something and not moving around a lot. Um, but we don't turn our heat on at all in the winter. And I know that that's gonna vary depending on your location and where you are. But I just recommend trying to adjust your body to as close to the outside temperature as possible while still being, you know, comfortable. Your body will adjust. So the number nine thing that we do to save money is everybody in my house has a very easy to maintain hairstyle or they cut their hair at home. Getting your hair cut professionally, if you are doing it on a regular basis, can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year just to maintain your hair, dyeing your hair, all of that stuff that I think typical people do. Uh, we don't do any of that. We don't pay anybody to do any of that. My 14 year old daughter does like to get her hair cut at a salon, but she only does that once or twice a year. She has a long, has longer hair, so she's able to get away with that. Um, my older daughter who has short hair, she actually cuts her own hair and she likes to color her hair too. And she does all of that at home and that saves a lot of money. I have locks, so I don't have to get my hair cut ever. And it also reduces the um, my, and the need to wash my hair as often. And then my partner has really short hair and is really easy to maintain at home. But if you're a family of four, like we are, and you're going to the salon on a regular basis and getting your hair cut professionally, you're getting your hair colored professionally, it's going to add up to a whole lot of money. So just doing as many of those things as possible yourself will really save your family a whole lot of money. Number 10 is we, almost all of our clothes that we buy are hand-me-downs or second-hand. We rarely buy anything new. This is also better for the environment to buy used items, not just clothing, but like furniture and stuff like that. We almost never buy anything new. Uh, we look 
when we need clothes, we'll go to like thrift stores and stuff like that. For the new baby, we've gotten tons of hand-me-downs from people that we know. We've just, you know, we've told them that we're going to have a baby and we have gotten more clothes than we can possibly use, which has just been amazing. Of course, we still like to buy some new things. So we've bought a few new things just because that's fun, you know, to buy your new baby new items. But for the most part, almost everything that we have for everybody in our family is has been bought secondhand. Our furniture, we never buy new. We look on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and stuff like that and buy used furniture or we'll build our own furniture. But it very rarely do you ever need anything that is like completely brand new. If we do buy something that's brand new, we really put a lot of thought into it and make sure that it is really worth it and valuable um, to our family. One tip for like kids clothes when you are gonna buy anything that's new is to plan ahead and shop the clearance section at an end of a season after they put out their new clothes. Old Navy and Target are kind of like our favorite places to shop for clearance items. You can get stuff super cheap at the end of a season once they put their, their new clothes out um, and just save a ton of money. It sometimes is even cheaper than buying it at a thrift store. Number 11 is going to be sell items when you're done using them. So we homeschool and so at the end of a homeschool year, I usually will sell all of our like homeschool curriculum and pass that on to another family that's going to be using it. And if we're done with a piece of furniture or just really anything that we don't want anymore, instead of like throwing it away, I will try and sell it. Or, you know, if it doesn't sell, then you can donate it to um, a local thrift store or some sort of donation center. But try and sell items that you're not using, you don't need, your kids have grown out of, and that way you can recoup some of that money. Sometimes if you're patient selling an item, you can buy something used, get your use out of it, and then sell it for even more money than you bought it for if you bought it used and at a really good deal. So number 12 is to utilize the library instead of the bookstore. So the library has so many free resources. Not only do they have books, but they also have movies and um, stuff that you can rent at the library. We do like to go to bookstores and hang out at bookstores. It's a really nice atmosphere to be in, but we never actually buy anything at a bookstore. We take pictures of the books that we like and then we check them out at the library. A lot of libraries also have um, access to free apps where you can listen to audiobooks and just you get a whole lot of great resources by utilizing your local library. You're paying taxes on that library system anyway, so you might as well utilize it. Number 13 is to ride bikes or walk instead of driving whenever possible. This is gonna save so much money on gas and wear and tear on your vehicle, and it's also gonna provide you and your family with a lot of exercise at the same time. It's great to get outside and be in the outdoors, get exercise. A lot of kids don't get enough of that these days. So if you live in an area where you can bike or walk, definitely utilize that as much as possible. Same thing goes with like public transportation is utilize that if it's available in your area. Number 14, which kind of ties into that is only have a limited number of vehicles. What is the minimum number of vehicles that your family could own and still function normally? Could you guys survive on just one vehicle? Vehicles are very expensive, not only in the initial cost, but also in insurance and taxes and wear and tear and maintenance and all of that stuff really adds up in a vehicle even more than, you know, I kind of talked about that with your house, but vehicles are even 
more of a liability than a house is. They depreciate and is just an expense that you really want to minimize. When we were in Tennessee, we lived in a pretty rural area and we did need two vehicles. But then when we moved to Florida, we live in a little bit more of a urban area. We can walk places. We do have public transportation. So we went from a two vehicle house down to a one car house and it has been fine. We do have to, um, you know, work around each other's schedules and stuff. And there's been, you know, minimal inconvenience, but to us it's worth it right now in order to save that money. Okay, number 15, cell phones. So we're a family of four and we have two teenagers. So in our family, we started off with both of the adults have cell phones and then we had a family phone that the kids could use when they were out of the house at friends' houses or stuff like that. Now that they are 14 and 16, they do both each have their own cell phone because they're out of the house more and um, I just feel like they're old enough to have their own phones. However, they do both pay for their own phones and that is either through chores around the house or through money. They do both make their own money and they are responsible for their cell phone bill. That's how we decided that they were able to get their own cell phone and so they do pay for their own cell phone. So I know some kids have cell phones really, really young and their parents are paying for them, but I would just recommend limiting the number of phones in your house to keep your cell phone bill as low as possible. And for us, my kids were able to get their own personal phones once they were able to pay for them themselves. And of course, we're responsible enough to have their own phones. And number 15 is find free or really inexpensive activities to do with your family. Just about every community is going to have free and cheap activities for children and family to attend. One place you can look for these um, activities are at your local library. I highly recommend joining your local homeschool group, even if you're not a homeschooler, because the homeschoolers are really good at finding um, cheap activities and they will post them on their homeschool group as resources. Um, a lot of places like zoos and aquariums and stuff like that will have like homeschool days where uh, admission is a lot less expensive. And, you know, if you have younger kids or maybe you even want to pull your kid out of school to go do a fun activity, check out the homeschool days. Um, I'm sure the homeschoolers don't want me to tell you this, but um, in order to save money, join your local homeschool group. Also, as far as like extracurricular activities, we have never really done any super expensive extracurricular activities. If the kids have wanted to play like baseball or do gymnastics or something like that, we go to our local community center and find like community programs that offer those services at a much lower cost than like a private organization that is going to like professionally train your child to do these things. My kids were always just interested in doing stuff like that for fun and we weren't really ever going to be like competition level, especially not when they were little. If your family's into that, that's cool, but most families are not going to be like wanting to like be super competitive. Um, they just want their kids to have like some extracurricular activities to do for fun. So you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on extracurricular activities. Just check your local community center. Um, library might be a good resource um, and ask around and see what the low cost options are in your area. Okay. Number 17 is don't use disposable products. Any product that you use that you're just gonna throw away is going straight into the trash right after you use them. So things like paper towels, plates, dishes, stuff like that, anything that's disposable, water bottles, 
those are all things that you're gonna have to rebuy over and over again. So try and find things that are not disposable that you can reuse. They make, like the eco-friendly community has designed like so many like awesome reusable products, paper towels, toilet paper. Um, with our new baby, we are going to be using cloth diapers and cloth wipes. Um, not saying that we won't ever use disposable diapers like when we are out all day, but in general, we're gonna be using cloth diapers. Minimize your use of disposables as much as possible and it'll save you so much money in the long run. You might be a little bit more of an investment up front. When you take care of your items and you use them over and over again, you'll end up saving money. So number 18 is to make your own cleaners for your house. Baking soda and vinegar are awesome cleaners and basically what we use to clean everything in our house, a little bit of essential oil. Those items are super cheap and they also don't have any chemicals in them. You can spend a whole lot of money buying a whole bunch of different types of cleaners to clean your shower, your toilet, your countertops, your floors, when you could really just be using vinegar and baking soda in some sort of combination with water, some essential oils, and um, we do use Dr. Bronner's soap and, you know, make your own cleaners and it'll clean everything. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money on different types of cleaners. Number 19, this one's becoming a lot more popular, so I'm always like, should I put this on the list or not? But not having cable, um, we haven't had cable for years, 10 years maybe. Um, we have internet and we usually have one streaming service at a time, like one service like Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu. Um, we always have an Amazon Prime because we're Amazon Prime members. So we always have Amazon Prime. And then we occasionally, most of the time we'll have one other one that we're paying for. But honestly with Amazon Prime, we don't even have to. All of these streaming services that we use, there's no contract. So you can just cancel and flip flop. You know, when the new Stranger Things episodes came out, we got Netflix for a month just so we could watch the new episodes of that. But um, yeah, just you can save a lot of money by um, playing around with your streaming services and not having cable. So number 20 is teach your kids about money even from an early age. Um, make them, you don't ever wanna make kids like worried about money, but it is very important to teach them like financial literacy and how money in the real world works. When I was a kid, I think it's a generational thing. You know, I'm a millennial. My parents never talked about money or finances. It was all very private. And so it took me a little bit of time as an adult to really like understand like, I mean, I knew about working, saving money, like the very basics. I was good with money. Um, I didn't, I wasn't never an overspender, but you know, I had to teach myself a whole lot of things about money um, as an adult that kind of set me back a little bit and I wish I would have known a lot earlier. So with my kids, my teenagers, they know a whole lot about money. They have had the ability to earn money around the house doing chores for a very long time. They started their own business online making not a lot of money, but you know, a little bit of money selling stuff on Macari and and stuff like that so they know how money works. My older daughter just turned 16 and it's easy to get a job when you're 16 here. So she, that was like, as soon as she turned 16, she was ready to get a job. Um, she started her first job today. Yesterday we went and opened her a bank account. So she is learning to manage her own money that way. Teaching kids how to budget when making purchases, even if you as a parent are going to be buying them, say like um, seasonal clothes or school supplies, give them a budget and let them go and pick out the items that they need and um, spend that money themselves so that they learn um, how to manage that money. Even if it's coming from you and isn't their money, then it's just a very valuable tool for them to be able to learn. And it'll make them more aware and conscious of the decisions that like you 
as an adult are making. So when you go to a store, they're not asking you to buy a whole bunch of things because they respect the money and see value in it. I could probably talk about this topic a whole lot, but uh, maybe I'll save that for another video. Uh, but I'm going to end that one there. Number 21 is to spend time with families that share your values. So if you're spending time around a whole lot of people who um, like to spend money on expensive things and are not really in the same mindset that you are, it is going to be a little bit more difficult than if you are spending time with people who share your financial values. We do as humans just naturally have that uh, fear of missing out, keeping up with the Joneses. It's, it's easy to get caught up in all of that. So really set yourself up for success by surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you in your financial decisions. And number 22, just embrace being weird and different when it comes to spending money. Fortunately, like we have found people around us who live a similar lifestyle as us. So we don't really feel all that weird or different just because of the atmosphere that we live in. So like even like the neighborhood that we chose to live in is kind of like a down to earth neighborhood. We didn't want to buy a house with an HOA or you know, like even the neighborhood that we have chosen to live in is a very laid back neighborhood. There's no HOA, there's no um, keeping up with the Joneses type thing. Everybody in our neighborhood is just really like chill and um, nobody tries to overdo the other person as far as like decorations for holidays and stuff like that. That was something, that was an environment that we knew when we were buying a new house that we didn't want to put ourselves in because it is really easy to get sucked into that lifestyle. So because we have surrounded ourselves with this, these certain types of people, our friends, our family, um, we don't really feel weird. But then, you know, sometimes we're around people. For example, when I shop and do Instacart and the majority of the people who are buying groceries on Instacart and the houses that I go to and deliver groceries to, um, they probably would think that I was really weird because of the way that we buy groceries, the way that we live our life. And just, you know, I mean, we meet people out and talk to people who um, probably think we're weird, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Let me know if you guys do any of these things or if you have any other tips or ideas for families to save money, maybe ways that your family has saved money over the years. Um, leave that in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out the video that I did on the extreme ways that I personally save money. And you can also check out my video on my tips on how to save money on your grocery budget. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time.